and hi again. We're going to be looking at how to uh, find the volume of a cylinder and find actually the maximum volume of it like we've been doing before. So it's kind of a max min problem without the min. Um, so this is the cylinder that, that we have. We are given the diameter and that's 4x and then we're given the height which is uh, 24 minus 3x and of course you remember from before that is the standard equation when we try to find the volume of a cylinder so what we need to do is think okay how can we use the volume formula and take that turn it into a function uh, so that the volume changes as x changes so it's kind of straightforward let's just see what we need uh, as you can see this this part here that's r and we have d so we're gonna have to change that of course and that's simple enough to do it's just gonna be r is just half of d so when we have that then we just do things like this here's the pi the r squared r is 2x and then it's r squared so it's 2x quantity to the power of 2. Some people will make the mistake of not putting in, uh, they'll perhaps do this, 2x squared like that, and that would be wrong. You'll get the wrong answer if you do that. All right, so here is the formula. We, of course, want to clean it up a bit, so let's do that. Um, I'm going to skip over some of the steps because at this point, um, you are getting better at running these things, and uh, you need to practice doing that. So I'm, I'm going to leave that to you. Uh, and this is what you will get when you do that. So it's, it's not a hard thing to do. Just, just practice at it. Go ahead and let pi be pi for a while until it's time to do the final equations. And in this one, we're going to solve to four significant figures. So, All right, let's do this now. Um, I wanted to show you the graph because I went ahead and plotted the graph. Uh, you can do this in a calculator if you want or on your computer. I just like to, I always like to think in pictures. So when we see a graph like this, we can see, well, when we take the derivative and it's a sec, here's, that's a power of two and this is a power of three. So we expect to find two places to uh, have a zero spot when it comes to the tangents that are uh, approaching this. So we expect to find one there and to find one there. And that's exactly what we get. Now I only put the tangent up on top because uh, down here, that's not going to do us any good because we have a zero volume. And it's not a very good container if it can't hold anything. So we'll just do the ones that actually give us an actual positive volume. All right, we have that. So you can think to yourself, what would the next logical step be? Well, we need to maximize this, so we need to take the derivative. Let's do that. There's the derivative. And we need the derivative to be 0, because that's the only possibility. Whether it's max or min, you need to find the 0 derivative spot. So let's do that. OK. Now again, if this is too fast for you, pause. Work out the algebra yourself. Um, I, I need you guys to learn to do this and show all your steps. So this is more of a, almost a compendium where I'm, I'm putting it together, showing you the way now, but you, you're all big boys and girls now. It's time to <laughs> be able to stand on your own two feet. So let's go ahead and solve this one. You can see that this derivative is a second degree equation. So we expect to find two solutions. And from the previous graph, we know that there will be two solutions. So let's do that. Okay. We expected to find a zero uh, because in the first graph, we saw that the volume goes to zero when x is zero. So, and that it was flat there. Um, but this is one that we're just not going to have any use for. Mostly because we don't like cylinders with zero volume. The other one, we can work with. So let's, let's do that. Now here's that graph again. We know we're not going to use uh, the zero, so let's cross that out. 
But look over here. It says 5 and a third, and 5 and a third is ooh, about right there. And that's going to go up, you know, to there. And you can see that we expect to have a, a zero derivative there. Uh, so the tangent has a slope of zero. All right. So what do we do with that? Well, as you're suspecting, we're going to do something with it. There you go. We're going to take that one that gives the zero. We're going to put it into the original equation. And something comes out. There it is. If it's too fast, that's fine. Just pause and you can do this yourself with a paper and a calculator and such. Now that's, we're not quite done. I wanted to show you another thing as part of the analysis that uh, we've been doing. And that, that is by, well, I'm going to take away some of this and just show you the graph kind of zoomed in and another way of looking at this. Okay, there's the graph. And underneath you see that I put uh, f prime right there. Okay, that's because we're going to look at the mm, the first derivative in a little bit different way. First of all, what do you see if I if I put a tangent right here? Is the tangent going to be positive, negative, or zero? And if I put a tangent here, is it positive, negative, or zero? And here, and here, we're going to be looking at each little section. We're going to look to the left of our zero flat spot and the other flat spot and in between. All right, so let's let's do that. Here you can see on the left, right right here, okay, I put a, a pink negative sign there. That's because everywhere to the left of this zero, the tangent will have a negative slope. It doesn't matter if I put it, oh, this curve doesn't, it does continue, but you can't see much of it. That's the way I clipped it. Okay, that's going to be negative, that tangent will be negative, and, and so on. And then as soon as you get to here, to the zero spot, okay, that, that's when it's flat, of course. Well, we'll pretend that's flat. Uh, then you go to the right, you're going to get positive. It's positive there, it's positive there, it's positive there, and then right here, zero, when it's, you know, five and a third. So let's look at that all put together, and then I'm going to put arrows underneath the signs and watch what happens. Okay, where it's negative, we put in the downward sloping arrow. Where it's zero, I put in a white little flat mark. I prefer to do it this way. Some books do it slightly different, but the idea is the same. Then where it's positive, a blue arrow pointing upwards. Zero again, I like to just, I, I like to connect the tail to the little flat spot here. There's a reason for that. It's because you can see that this follows the curve. If you start putting this in, you'll see that it behaves the same way, not as dramatically, but it behaves the same way as the f of x up here. You can see that the curve, you know, it, it's going down, it's flat, it goes up, and then it's flat, and then it goes down again. Okay, that's, that's just the whole idea. This is um, another way of looking at it. Um, Sometimes it's easier, and, and when you know what you're doing, you just go right to the beginning. Uh, you don't have a problem. You just draw the graphs. You know what you're looking for. Other times you want to have this in there. It, it is a bit contextual. So they're all good tools to have, and you should be able to do them all. So, all right. Hope that helps.